In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the ultimate alarm clock in Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit subscribe below so you don't miss out on future videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech and today we're going to make an awesome alarm clock in Home Assistant using automations and Node Red. We're going to have it triggering lights, sounds and announcements. So let's get going. Now as always, the code to my final flow is linked below. So I suggest you download that and import it into your Node Red now as it's much easier to follow along with the video if you've got the code in front of you. So the first thing we're going to need is some helpers. If you haven't already, check out my full video on the Home Assistant helpers and how you can use them to improve your automations. As you can see, all my helpers are referenced in a separate file, so we'll head over there now. First of all, we're going to need an input boolean, well, a couple of input booleans. The first input boolean is for sleeping. Technically, we don't actually need this, but I think it will be useful to have inside your Home Assistant. This boolean will turn on when I trigger my sleep scene at night, and then we'll turn off when my alarm goes off in the morning. That means that Home Assistant knows when I'm sleeping and when I'm awake, or up. Next, we need a, an input boolean for our alarm. We give it a name and an icon. This is going to be used to trigger the flow or trigger the alarm sequence. We're also going to need an input date time. This is so we know what time our alarm needs to go off. This is going to have a time component, but not a date component. Once we're happy, we save it, and then we restart those two sections of Home Assistant. Once that's done, we can head over to Node Red. In here, we're going to need a number of nodes. We're going to need an event state node, a current state node, a function node, and a wait until node. The event state node will trigger the flow when our input boolean for the alarm is turned on. So we'll do that at night once we've set our alarm. The current state node will then get the time from our input date time and output it as message.alarm. Then we move on to the function node. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Now with this alarm, I want things to start happening about half an hour before my alarm's due to go off, so I can slowly dim the lights or slowly play some music, for example. So we're going to need this function node to take half an hour away from our input date time. If any of you have worked with time before, you know it's a complete nightmare and this is why this function node is quite complicated. This is the way I've done it. I'm sure there's a different way out there and probably a better way out there to do it, but it works. I'll try and walk you through every line of this function so you can try and understand what I've done and why we need to do it. So to start off with, we need to get our hour and our minutes separated from our message.alarm. To do this, we get our message.alarm and we take the zero and first components for our hour. The second component is the colon, so we ignore that. And then for the minute, we take the third and fourth components. Now we need to convert our minute from a string to a number and subtract 30 from it. That means we're taking half an hour from our time. But this throws up its own problems. For example, if we set our alarm to quarter past seven, then this function will change the time to seven minus 15, not 6.45. So we need an if statement. If our minute value is less than zero, then we take one from our hour number and we add 60 to our minutes. So that makes it 6.45 instead. We then have our next problem. To compare our alarm time or our start time to our current time, we need the strings to be in exactly the same format. But if, for example, we set our alarm to 7.33, we take half an hour and that gives us 7.03, except because it's treated as a number, it'll just give us 7.3. So if our message.minute is less than 10, we add an extra zero to, before it to make it the two digits that it needs to be. Our next problem comes if we set our alarm to 0015, for example. If we take half an hour from that, then we end up with minus 145. And that's wrong. We should end up with 2345. So if our hour is equal to minus one, then we instead change the hour to 23. 
Now we just need our message.start to be message.hour plus colon plus message.minute. And this is where we run into our final problem. Our hour has actually been taken from a string to a number and then back to a string. But when it was in a number form, we have the same problem as before. So 0, 7 became 7. So in this final if statement, we check the length of that string. The length should be 5, 2 hour digits, a colon and 2 minute digits. If our length is less than 5, then that means our hour has only got one digit. So what we do is we stick a 0 at the start of the string. Now we can move on to the wait until node. This is a lot simpler in comparison. We wait until our sensor.time is equal to our message.start. And then we can move on to what we want to happen. We're going to start off with the lights. So I'm going to add a couple of call cool service nodes in here. The first one is going to set our lights to an initial setting. And the second one is going to transition over the half an hour, gradually waking me up. So in the first one, we want to turn on our bedroom lights. And in the data, we want the brightness to be one. And we want the color temperature to be warm white. Or numerically, that's 500. In the second cool service node, again, we want to make sure we're turning on our bedroom lights, but this time we want the brightness to be 255 or full brightness, and we want the color temperature to be a cold white or 142. What we also want to do is add a transition time in. That means it will gradually fade from dim and warm white to bright and cold white, and we're going to do this over 1,800 seconds or half an hour. Now let's have some music. For this, I'm going to use some Sonos nodes. First of all, we're going to use the universal Sonos node to clear the queue, in case anything was left over from the day before. Then we're going to use the My Sonos node to queue up our next playlist. For this, I'm going to use Wake Up to a Smell of Coffee. Thank you, Spotify. Now we want the universal Sonos node back so we can play this queue. What we're then going to do is gradually increase the volume over increments over time. We're going to start off at 10, then move to 15 and then 20 with delays of 10 minutes, 10 minutes and then 5 minutes. We can link them all up and then move on to our announcement. For this, I'm going to use the Alexa Media Player announcement. We're going to add a delay 20 minutes from the start time or 10 minutes before the alarm is meant to go off. And then we're going to add a call service. In here, we're going to notify the Alexa Media Player for the bedroom spot or the spot in the bedroom. And then we input all the relevant data. We set our message to be 10 minutes to wake up. And then we need to tell it what it wants to do. So the type is announce. And then the target gets it from the service, which is the media player. We can copy and paste this to create our final announcement. We just need to change the message to time to get up or something along those lines. We're going to add a 10 minute delay between the two announcements. So we have a 10 minute warning, a 10 minute delay, and then our final announcement. And that should trigger at the time that we wanted our alarm to go off. After that announcement, I'm just going to add a final Sonos node, turning the volume up one step further. That means that once I've been told to get up, I have no excuse to stay in bed because the, the music's really loud. And finally, we need a couple of cool service nodes to turn off our input booleans. So the first one is going to turn off our input boolean for the alarm. That means it's ready for use the next day. The second one, is going to turn off our sleeping input boolean. That means we're awake, because we're out of bed, so why wouldn't we be awake? Once happy, you can link it all up, deploy it, and test it out next morning. So there we have it. An awesome alarm inside of Home Assistant. Make sure you hit subscribe below and click that bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.